Hi, I'm Sam from Danels and today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these fantastic double-sided lampshades using our double-sided PVC which I have here. So if you're already making lampshades with us, you'll know how our kits work. But this product is brilliant because it means you can actually showcase two different types of fabric or wallpaper. So just to show you, you see that we've got a fabric on the inside here and then we've also got a really pretty fabric on the outside. So it means you can add some more personality to your lampshade. Just to show you this one, this one is, as you can see, a really beautiful kind of silk here on the outside and then it has a wallpaper on the inside. So it means that if you're doing that home decoration project and you want to make something that matches with your interior design, then this is a really great way of doing it. So all of the components that you need to make up one of our fantastic double-sided lampshades are available from Danels. Um, so I'll just introduce you to each component. First of all, we have our double-sided PVC panel. As you can see, it's um, self-adhesive on both sides, so this is just the backing paper. And also to mention that this has been tested quite rigorously. So it's um, fire retardant, which is really important. Um, it's also the professional um, lampshade making PVC you could expect to find on the high street as well. And it's also been tested by the Lighting Association Labs. So this is actually the real deal, as I say, what you'd expect to see in the shops. The other things that we have are our double-sided high-tack tape. And this, I'll just undo it for you, you can see is flexible, it's really sticky and it's also see-through. And you'll understand why as we go through the demonstration. We also have what's called our finishing tool and this is the tool that we're going to use to get this really neat lovely edge on our shade and tuck all of the excess fabric underneath and out of sight and I think you'll agree it looks really professional so I'll show you how to use that later on as well. For the double sided PVC you'll also need uh, self-adhesive strips. So as you can see this is a section of the original PVC it's just one-sided this one and we're going to use that to create a margin at the top and bottom of our shade. Now it's on a roll here and this should actually last you quite a long time because this is actually reusable so um, once you've peeled the backing off it's sticky on the other side and you can just roll those strips neatly um, and reuse them again if you want to. And then finally we have our frames. So we have our utility ring and our plain ring and today I'm going to be making up a 30 centimetre diameter lampshade. So this is the 30 centimetre across and obviously you can get these rings in all different sizes to suit. They're epoxy coated plastic so they look really smart. The section that you'll be able to see on your shade is this section here in the middle of the utility ring and you'll notice in the center this has um, a little pop-out bracket here so at the moment this is set for a UK fitting so that's what you'd see most in your home um, and that can be a pendant or as a table lamp and then all you need to do is take this white section out here and that will give you a wider opening and that's for a European fitting. So before we start, let's just have a little chat about fabrics or wallpaper because you can use that as well as we've shown you here on the larger um, lampshade. Really, you need to stick to woven fabrics. Um, cottons or linens are perfect for this kind of project and they can be kind of a lightweight through to a medium weight. Um, you don't want anything with any stretching because it just simply won't work with the self-adhesive on the back of the panel. So we've got two really lovely cotton fabrics here. This is gonna be our inside and then this one is gonna be our outside. So we're actually gonna start with the inside and what you need to do is also make sure that all your fabrics are ironed in advance because you don't really want any creases in there that you'll see on your final shade. And obviously everything we're using here is professional quality. So this is exactly what you expect to see on the high street. So we want to make sure it looks really great. So I'm just gonna pop the larger one down on the floor here to give myself a little bit more space. And what we need to do is just make sure that our fabric 
is face down, so we're working on the wrong side. And there we go. And I'm just going to check my kind of pattern there and line that up. And those little cap faces are actually all over, so it doesn't matter too much. If you had something like a stripe that you wanted to showcase on the inside, then you would need to line it up quite carefully just to make sure that you're getting everything in and it looks straight when you see inside of the shade. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up the panel and I'm simply going to peel back the backing paper. This can be the trickiest part is just getting this off. There we go. And I'm just going to peel back around about five to ten centimetres and I'm just going to make sure it's in the position I want it in and then simply push that down and with the base of your fist just adhere that to the fabric. And then using my other hand, my left hand, I'm just simply going to pull that paper along and again make sure that's nice and smooth and adhered to the fabric. And we're just going to continue along. So just pull that away again. And it's good to pull a section at a time. If you're feeling more confident, you can pull a little bit more away. There we go. And it's just making sure that it's stuck down. And you can see that that's coming away really easily. So a nice, simple start. And then I think we'll remove all of this now. There we go. Okay, so that's all stuck down on the fabric. And what I always do is just flip over here, make sure there's no creases, uh, make sure there's no little frays that might have got caught underneath, because that can happen. So really, you're just kind of doing some quality control and making sure it all looks good. So that's great, so I'm happy with that. And our next stage is just to simply cut out. I'm just going to move this fabric over so I don't catch it with my scissors. And just using your fabric scissors here, and just to mention actually, you can use a craft knife for this as well, but do make sure you protect your tabletop. This can be a real kitchen table craft, so um, just a space, flat workspace at home. And as I say, you can use a craft knife if you want to. The other bits and pieces you need from home is, I just always have a separate pair of scissors to cut my tape, so I don't get my fabric scissors um, gunked up with the glue from the tape. And also, you can have a seam roller as well. This is optional. It might be something you already have in your kit. And if you're going to be making a lot of shades, it's definitely something um, to have because that helps us close the seam really firmly. And I'll show you that as part of the demo. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to cut around the edge of the PVC. We're just cutting away this excess fabric. So really simple, using the PVC as a guide. There we go and we're just going to do this short end. With the short ends just make sure you cut as neat as you can because one of the short ends will be visible as we close the seam. So I'll just put these to one side. So there we go. So that's the inside of our panel is already complete and finished which is great. Now we're going to go on to the outer. So I'm just going to pop this fabric out, similar way, and again, we're working with the fabric side, um, the, the right side down, so we're working onto the wrong side, and we're just going to repeat the process, but slightly different this time. So, just want to have a look and see how I'm looking with these cats. So, just sort of choose, this is a little bit more laid out, so I'm just going to choose a section that I like, so that's great there. And exactly the same process, 
In fact, I'll just pull it over a little bit. Same process, we're just going to lift the PVC up, remove the backing tape, and I'm going to position that. So there we go. I'm happy with that. And again, base of your fist, just making sure it's secure. And we're going to repeat the process again. So you should be quite familiar by the time you get to this section. And the nice thing about this is these are stunning looking shades, really lovely for your home, great for a gift for somebody. And even if you're a beginner crafter, this is really straightforward because everything is already measured out for you. So just pulling away. When you position your panel, we just need to make sure we leave a margin at the top and the bottom, which is why it's always good with your fabric to just cut it down to a rough size first, but make sure that you do leave a margin, like I say. Okay, and I'm just going to do the same, flip over, just check that there isn't anything caught underneath. Great. Okay, so that's our outer done now. So that's the outside, so you can see this is our inside and this is our outside. So I'm not going to cut this now. I'm just going to take our self-adhesive strip instead. And we're going to create what in our regular kits, and if you're a regular customer of ours, you'll know that there's a kiss cut. We're going to actually recreate that this time. So taking our strip, I'm just going to cut away the end to make it square there. We're going to peel back the backing. So just take that off. So just, you can see there, just to reveal a little bit. And we're going to line that up along the top. And we're going to make sure that we line it up as best as we can with the short edge. And we're just going to simply take that strip, pulling away the backing, so it's very similar to the technique we've just used with the actual PVC. And then we're going to run it all the way along keeping that end out the way. When we get to the other end, we're just going to take our scissors and simply snip that off in line with the short edge. So just let me get rid of this excess here. So you can see that this is just really neatly cut on each side. So it kind of just is a strip along the top to create the margin that we're then going to cut around. So I'm just going to turn it around to make it easy and do the same along the bottom. So taking sticky side down, revealing a little bit of the backing, we're just going to add that onto there. And just a little bit at a time. And we're getting it as flush as we can towards the edge of the actual inside of the shade. There we go. And I'm just going to do the same again, just taking my non-fabric scissors and just snipping that away. So now what that creates is the template that we can now cut round. So we're going to repeat as we did before but this time we're cutting along the outside edge of the strip to take away the excess fabric. So I'm just going to do the short end first. Okay. There we go. Just turn it around, whoops, and do the short edge here. And then just cutting the final side. There 
There we go. So now we have our outer and our inner complete. And we're just going to remove this now. So this is the whole idea. So very gently, we're just going to peel back the self-adhesive strip. And as you can see, that creates a margin at the top and at the bottom. And just to note, it's worth doing this quite slowly because we don't want to create lots and lots of frays. This fabric's fraying just a little bit, which is okay, but we don't really want to kind of encourage that. And then turn around and do the same on the other side. And just something to note when you're doing a double-sided shade is just to make sure that when you do position your inside on your outer fabric that you get your direction right. So if these were plain fabrics, it wouldn't really matter. But obviously here we've got cats on the inside, cats on the outside. So we need to make sure that the cats on the inside aren't upside down or vice versa. So just check that. So I'm just going to remove these little frays to get them out of the way. There's not many of them. And just before we finish with our panel, just got one more thing we need to do. So take your high tack tape, I'm just going to snip the end off. And just along one of the short sides, we're just going to run the tape from the top to the bottom on the inside fabric. So it shouldn't be touching the outside fabric. And then just snip away at the bottom. And that's going to help our shade close when we roll, which is our next section. So we can just put that to one side now because we're finished with that. And we're going to take our rings. So I'm just going to start with the plain ring and we're going to go back to our tape. So as I said, this is a double sided high tack tape. It's really good quality. And we're going to simply position that on the ring. So you can see that the ring is sitting between the two um, edges of the tape. So, and slowly, and I usually just run around about five centimeters at a time, we're just going to add that to the ring. And this is the part that will hold the shade together. So the whole shade will come together using this tape, um, which is why it's so sticky. And it doesn't have to be millimetre perfect, but if you can get it in the centre, that works really well. And you'll see in the next stage, we need as much coverage of the tape around the ring as possible. And when we get where the tape meets, I always cut, just a little tip for you, just cut so that you can still see some of the white. So they don't overlap, which makes it very difficult when you're trying to peel it off. And also, um, you can see where you've started. So the next stage is to take your fingers and your thumbs and simply wrap the tape by pushing down around the ring. And what we're trying to do is encourage as much coverage as possible. That's why the outside of the tape is flexible so we can do this. And it gives us that really good sticky coverage for putting our shade together in a moment. There we go. So that's our plain ring done. And we're now just going to repeat the process with our utility ring. So exactly the same, just getting it in position, five centimetres at a time. And just to mention that all of the components that you can buy to do the double sided lampshade are all professional quality. So it's exactly what you would expect to see on the high street. And there we go, I'm just going to snip that away and then roll around with my fingers again. Okay, so that's looking great. And we're back to the beginning again. And we're now in a position where we can start rolling our rings. And there's a couple of things you're going to need to think about here. So we're going to be rolling towards the end that we've got the tape on. So we're just going to pop it like that. Now, at this point, this is where you would need to decide what kind of shade you're making. The only reason we need to make a decision on that is because we've got a fabric that has a direction. So, just to show you, 
If you're making a table lamp, your ring would be at the bottom and your plain ring would be at the top. If it's the other way round and you'd like it hanging down as a pendant light from the ceiling, you would put your plain ring at the bottom and you would put your utility ring at the top. And also just to mention that the section with the utility area in must be facing in to the lampshade. So the way I do it is I always lay my rings out where I want them to be so I can't get mixed up. So I'd like to make this a table lampshade. So I'm going to position this ring here and this ring here. And I'm just gonna position them there on my work area. Just makes it really easy and then you can't make a mistake. And as I said, we're going to be working towards the end with the tape on. So first of all, remove the backing from the tape from the utility ring and then you can position that on the table and it won't get stuck. And then we're going to take the backing off our plain ring so we're just removing the red backing. The tape itself is clear as well, just so you know that's not red. Oops. Okay, a little bit of static there, got that. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our rings and we're going to position these on the inside fabric. So I just do these one at a time. Another tip is not to get your spoke on the join of the seam. It's not a huge problem if that happens, but it's just better if you don't, just simply because we have to tuck all the fabric in and it can make it just a little bit more tricky. So I'm just going to position on the fabric, so that's the fabric of the inside, so it's on the pink here, not on the white on the um, overlap. And then I'm going to take my other ring and position in the same place. And what we're going to do really gently, and don't worry too much if you don't pick up if there's a little flap because we can sort that out later, we're really gently and quite lightly because the lighter you do it, the easier it is to tuck your fabric in afterwards, we're going to roll the rings. So you can see already that that's starting to take hold. You can see how strong that is. I'm just going to push this back on so it's level and then I'm actually going to use my hands a bit lower down because it makes it a little bit more comfortable it gives you that bit more control so we're just going to keep rolling and you can see now it's starting to take the form of a shade which is really nice so this is the good bit and we're going to keep rolling along and I tend to go from one to the other just to make sure they're staying on line. There we go. I'm just going to roll back a tiny bit there because I was just coming off. So that's possible as well. And if you do it nice and lightly, don't push too hard. There we go. And then when we get to this stage where we're just about to join the seam, I tend to turn it towards myself. And again, it just gives you that little bit more control. So we're just going to remove the backing. There we go. And what I do here at this stage, and this is a really good tip, we want it to look really professional, is just make sure that the edge you're pushing down matches the edge that's already stuck to the frame. So yeah, I'm happy that that's flush. And then I'm gently going to, you can see how lightly I'm putting that together because we don't want to push down at this point because that could damage the frame. And before we do anything else, I'm just going to turn it over. I'm going to give it a good push down with my hands. And I'm also going to take my seam roller. As I mentioned before, it's optional, but you can see that that gives you a really nice, firm push on the seam. So we're nearly at the stage of a completed lampshade. We've just got a couple more things to do. So before we go any further, you'll notice where your seam overlaps here, um, you've got kind of two squares of fabric that sit over each other. And what we want to do is we want to take one of those away. So I'm just going to snip in with my scissors 
and snip away that little square and then do exactly the same on the opposite side. So turning over, finding my seam, just going to snip in, there we go, okay. And then I'm just going to turn back to the plain ring side and what we need to do, I always start working from the seam, so the inside seam, we're just going to simply take the fabric over and it should stick to the tape that's underneath there. So we're giving it this really beautiful professional crisp edge. There we go. And then we're going to flip over and do the same on the reverse. So my seam is here. So we'll work around the other way this time. So from the inside seam, and when you get to the spokes, don't worry about those. Just push it down as best as possible around them. There we go. Okay, so we're very nearly there. So you'll remember that I mentioned before about our finishing tool. So two long edges and a sharp point and then a serrated edge as well. And we're going to use this now to get this really professional finish where we took all of the fabric underneath. So finding the seam again. And I'm just going to work from the inside seam. So I'm just going to lift that up slightly. We simply, I use the point, but you can use the serrated edge and I'll show you how to use all parts of this. We're simply going to push the fabric underneath. And you can see that that actually is going in quite easily. And you need to be not too gentle, but not too brutal either. So it's a little bit somewhere in the middle, just a bit of a firm push. And what happens is with the double sided um, shades is that the fabrics kind of work together. There's a little bit of friction there, so that's going under really nicely. And the long edges you can use just to smooth any little loose frays in. And if you want to, you can use the serrated edge just to get it started and push it underneath. So this has got a number of different uses. Now here I've got a bit of a bigger fray and I'm just going to snip that one away. And we'll get the loose ends from that back in. So I'll just tuck that under using the longer edge. And then we're back to the beginning. I'm just going to just go along, make sure. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's looking lovely. So that's one side finished already. And then we're going to just turn over and repeat on the other side. So working again, and I'll do it from this side here so you can see. We're just going to tuck underneath. And when we reach the point of the spoke, all we need to do, and I'll do that now, is we just simply, and I'll turn it actually this way, so you can see, we just simply lift up. And all we're going to do with the very tips of our scissors is a little <coughs> cut in there. And you can see what I've done is that now sits back really nicely, kind of almost like a pair of curtains around that spoke. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can go back now. And actually what I might do is just do all of them. So we're just lifting up and snipping and lifting up and snipping. And just going back to where we were, all we need to do Is just make sure that that sits underneath. I'm just going to turn it on its side so I can just get a bit of a better view. I've seen lots of different people make these lots of different ways so find the way that's comfortable for you and comfortable for your hands as well. And when you're doing it this way the idea is not to put too much pressure on the frame um, because it will just kind of put the weight on there so you can see that I'm keeping my hands well away from the area that I'm actually um, tucking under. And just coming up to that final spoke, making sure that that's all pushed around quite neatly. 
and that's our end. So I'm just going to swoosh around using the side. And if this becomes bent, a um, little tip is you can simply cut away to create a new fresh point. So I'm just going to use that point now to make sure that all of those loose ends, and this is what gives it the really professional finish. And there we have it. So I think you'll agree this is a fantastic looking lampshade with our double sided PVC giving us the option to put a fabric on the inside and the outside or that one of those could be a wallpaper as well. So just to remind you that all of the components for this shade are available from Danelle's. So that's the double sided um, PVC, also the self adhesive strip the rings, the double-sided tape and the finishing tools and we also have these fantastic downloadable instructions that take you through step by step everything that I've shown you today so you can use those to help you as you're making up your shade. So whether this is something that you're going to try at home for yourself to add to your interior decor or whether you're making for friends or even if you have your own small lampshade making business I think you'll agree that this shade is something that you should be making very soon. Thanks for watching.